welcome everybody. Nice to see you all again here. And uh, we'll just have a little look at the eclipse season that we're into for the, for the spring of 2023. So the 20th of April and the 5th of May, we have eclipses right in the middle of them. We're sandwiched right in the middle on the 30th of April as we talk today from all over the place. And so we're going to kind of jump around different topics and just things that are going to be of interest either personally or collectively in different ways. So who knows where this is going to go. I'm going to just pull up the chart for our, um, the 20th and that way we can, hang on, we've got Germany there. I'll just find our 20th of April eclipse. There we are. Um, is everybody seeing the charts? Are you, are you seeing the 20th? Of, okay, fantastic. So here we have the Aries solar eclipse, which was quite a doozy. Um, what is, does anybody want to say anything specific about that? What, what might uh, stand out just off the bat? Money. <laughs> <laughs> well, values. Values, yeah. And do you want to say more second about house. that? Well, anything to do with the second house, I think, represents um, income or things of... Um, personal value to me anyway mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that's right um I've just had Pluto finish in well almost finishing Capricorn is that's my second house um and uh yeah that's when I noticed that my natal Pluto was 29 degrees and when Pluto hit 29 degrees of uh Capricorn the house burnt down next door and interestingly enough we actually purchased that property when Pluto went into Capricorn. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. So that's why I'm thinking there has to be <clears throat> some deeper meaning there. Well, this eclipse would have squared that point, right? Uh, or was it a trine? Because if it was just going into Capricorn, that was trining as Pluto would have crossed over between Sagittarius and so you're talking about 2008, I guess. Um, yes, yes, yeah. that's what roughly, yeah, where mm -hmm. I can't remember the exact month. Right. But, um, okay, and so in general, I'm just curious what people think about eclipse energy. So what do you think of, like, if you had to explain an eclipse to somebody who has no idea what an eclipse is, what would you say for any of you? How, how do you describe an eclipse? In terms the energies of are on astrological, so all, anybody can answer, but in terms of astrological um, eclipses, not the phenomena of the eclipse. Uh, more extreme or intensity and okay. quicker as well. Yeah. Things seem to manifest faster when an eclipse is happening versus a, a normal full moon or new moon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just in my Mm -hmm. perception that is anyway I'm not sure if that's correct I mean you want to say something yeah I always uh just like a bit of a warning of um just being aware and kind of putting oneself in a in a space of like for me just getting enough sleep so being ready for whatever's going to come dangers and you know typical type of checking things out but at the same time like you're honest like works you, you're not going to know when it's going to come what's going to happen so like that being aware for me uh just doing health the healthiest habits I can to kind of just like be on guard I guess be on guard but um expect the unexpected, self -aware. And expect the unexpected yeah. basically yeah my my niece I just found out yesterday my Aries niece totaled her first car on the oh. eclipse <laughs> so I'm like yeah I believe it you know my sister called me up to see my point of view I said there's nothing to say it's it's just gonna happen yeah yeah um, but yeah I I take the two weeks and you know more of like a an elasticity around it not just even the solid two weeks even the moon before it of just a, a time to make for um, to have uh, time for yourself to go inward and think, observe what's going around, observe what's yeah. going around in your life and, and in others to um, 
to just kind of be, yeah, be the observer and see, okay, where is the, the roller coaster going? And, um, and just kind of like that portal, that window of time to see what comes up and, and just yeah. kind of ride the wave as it comes. Yeah, anybody else? What, what, what is an eclipse for you? Um, I think um, this eclipse, I, I, I felt it quite deeply, but maybe because I have more planets that are attached to, I think it, it does affect the one that has planets or points yeah, nice. um, in the house where it is. And I felt that a lot of people were anxious in, in this period um, and sleep pattern was quite erratic, mm -hmm. I would say. Um, so I, I found that was quite strong. And I always like, like when I was trying to figure out this, why is this feeling of anxiety and restlessness? And then I had this image of, it's, it's almost like, obviously the image of the node. For me, it was like a slingshot that th th that stone gets thrown to the other side, gets hit something and mm -hmm. it might bounce back at you or <laughs> might hit a target and you, that's where they expect the unexpected. It might hit something bountiful and great and, and yeah. wonderful. Or it might hit you back and you get, like you say, in a car crash or something, you know, quite um, crazy can happen that you don't expect. Mm -hmm. But I think us as, as dealing with astrology, we, we have the awareness of it. So we, I think we're more like, we, we're more Except sensitive to it. Mm -hmm. And we like walk on, walk on eggshells in a bit during this period because we have that feeling oh okay be on guard like Cammy says um and yeah that's how I see it but it's it's very individual and people that don't have yeah. awareness of things what you don't know doesn't hurt you you know exactly yeah, yeah. Mm. this is actually quite true because sometimes we put our radar on and look for things that are maybe not even related uh, there yeah. was somebody really interesting in the comments uh, of, I'm, I'm not sure if it was under the solar or the lunar eclipse video, but somebody wrote that something happened, uh, which initially they thought was super beneficial and turned out to be really, really unpleasant, which is really interesting because often it's the other way around, uh, but, you know, not to, not to minimize the, the experience, but it's just to say that we come into things with this idea of how we want things to be like we label things good and bad or that we want it to turn out yeah. this way. and sometimes things turn out almost the opposite or, or potentially far worse or far better than we could ever imagine and it's quite out of our control and like Camille was saying it's kind of like this accelerator energy that um, or maybe it was Sharon that was saying it speeds things up um, mm. I find that is really the case where it's like something that you might be dealing with that you know you're kind of resonating with for months even on end um but then all of a sudden it's just like boom, it just back. comes in and blindsides you yeah or or just gets resolved even you know it's just like very done, quickly along, you know with mm. the next thing um where it might have been building in such a way that it felt scary or or like you mentioned drawing anxiety invoking and then all of a sudden it's like oh so it was that and then you know it was some somehow makes sense or it just changed the script and therefore it's no longer that so uh yeah i i find these things very very much in terms of disruption and, and acceleration i find them very hard to predict for that reason because we just can't know there's so many factors that come into an eclipse and so i think also when you're actually living it it's very difficult to to identify it and that's when hindsight comes in whether yeah. it's a couple of weeks or a couple of months later yeah. and you see it so clearly but you weren't able to see it at the time when you were living through it yeah absolutely yeah and I find that for the same reason I try not to plan or organize anything sort of long lasting or durable at this time because there's just so many elements that change very rapidly and it's really hard yeah. to be able to say well I can plan around that unless you're trying to build in, you know, something new and completely innovative that, that would welcome that kind of energy. But I slow things down a lot around a yeah. 
because otherwise it's just a bit too coming hard and fast. And then uh, yeah. it's usually afterwards that you can make sense of things and, and then pick up and move in the direction you want to go again. Mm. What about you, Petra? What do you, yeah. do you think? Yeah, I would say um, nearly the same that like Camille said, um, if I'm aware of things, if I uh, know something is coming up or accelerating or it's more stronger, then I try to handle these energies and then mm. it's like kind of comforting me because mm. when things happening, I can, I can handle with it, you know, if I know it's Ma like makes sense of it strong and not easy, then I said, okay, it's okay. I know it's not strong and easy. So I accept it. And so I can <laughs> better handle it. Yeah, and I'm and as you said, I'm staying more, make a little bit slower, so that I can be more conscious of it. Yeah. Mm. So that's my how I can handle. Yeah. Things. I think I think the slowing down is uh, it's really significant. I um I never used to look at eclipses when I was younger, or even if I were in, initially, even when I started first following astrology, it just didn't, it didn't really enter into my frame of reference. Not that I wasn't formally studying it at that time, but I just, I, things just kept happening. And then I only realized after the fact how much was really due to the energies that were building around a particular time and then something would shift. Um, and it's fascinating to go back and kind of go back over my life in different stages and see how yeah. this has actually just pushed me in a different direction in some ways that I yeah. have completely not anticipated. Um, maybe, um, Camille, can we start with you and have a Please, little, yeah. before we, maybe before we do that, let's just have a look at the 5th of May eclipse so we can just get a feeling for that one. We only just briefly touched on this one, but the 5th of May eclipse, of course, being very different, it's now a lunar eclipse. Um, I just wanted to say in terms of the eclipses, I maybe you can add to something around this topic is that the difference between solar and lunar eclipses, um, it's kind of hard to really grasp. But for me, solar eclipses are like really incisive, really um, uh, strong, uh, defining moments where lunar eclipses tend to be very influential, especially in a broader range, meaning more public or more social. Um, and uh, they have a long sort of shelf life. They, they last a long time because they're so diffused. But what happens is with the solar eclipse, we can tend to see um, a specific action. At least this is the way I've, I've been uh, understanding eclipses, that this, the action is very identifiable. And with the lunar eclipse, the action is actually quite profound, but it happens over a long period of time. And it can be um, it can be weeks or months, and things are still developing based on these changes, and so they're not as uh, clear and obvious. Um, so I don't know if any of you have any other ideas about the difference between a solar and a lunar eclipse. It's very difficult to find anything hard and fast written down about that I, it's often it comes down to people's experience like what their lived experience is i still mm. tend to use a lot of the like the um, lunar eclipse being more of accumulation of like a full moon and the solar eclipse being more oh, of a, culm a culmination culmination yeah uh -huh. so a closure or a harvest of yeah some sort of a closure mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. the solar eclipse being um more of the beginning. Okay, okay. Because I see that with reference to the nodes themselves. Like mm. if, if the eclipse is on the north node, then it seems usually something new is coming in. Mm. And if the eclipse is on the south node, yeah. in this yeah. case, yeah. it is a, both a culmination and the south node eclipse. So yeah. there is that letting go and kind of moving on from something. And again, and also there is always, with every beginning is an ending. I mean, it is, that circle is gonna be, there's gonna be yeah. beginnings and endings simultaneously. Right. Yeah, for sure. All right. Um, can you can I pull up your chart? And yes, I'm. Ex up? I'll have to say a little bit going back. Yeah, you can pull up my chart, of okay. course. Um, I had that experience with this last on April twentieth, completely being on guard. I actually had a trip to go to Edinburgh, and my kids were going to be with a friend, and I was very excited. But that means a lot of travel and just like. Oh, uh, Mars was on my moon, and Mercury's going to go retrograde, and so I was just like 
if I don't get on the plane, I won't be, you know, surprised. <laughs> and so I just kind of was like, like someone said, walking on eggshells the whole yeah. time. Turns out was a beautiful weekend. Okay. Besides one of my flights being completely canceled. And I, because there was strikes, I think in Brandenburg airport, um, I just booked another flight, you know, like, you know, you expect it. Okay. You wake up in the morning, the flight's canceled buy another ticket <laughs> right yeah. and uh, but other than that everything went so smooth it was so beautiful the sun was shining and it was and I wasn't expecting that you know I wasn't expecting everything to go so smooth so that was a really beautiful surprise and then this next one is trying it's going to make a beautiful um uh grand trine with my mm, sun and my moon the you're, you're talking about the fifth of May. The fifth of May, yeah. So it'll be activating my fifth house sun, my ninth house moon, and be in my first house. So I am really looking forward to it. And again, we'll see what we'll see what happens. Yeah, but and so you don't have any right now. You don't have any inkling so far. Like sometimes these things show up a couple of weeks in advance. Well, and yes, I'm just I'm in. Um, so since the access started in November of 2021 was the first Taurus uh, solar eclipse. And so we've been, it'll be a good two years by the last lunar eclipse in October of this year. And so that first in my seventh house, but that access, so first and seventh, um, it was the very beginning of a little bit of freedom again in my life since my two oh, that girls were was that was square your midheaven and your IC, that one. There you go. Yeah. I don't I don't have the um degrees of I'm that. I'm just gonna check the dates here. So that was at two degrees, Scorpio, uh on the twenty-fifth. Are you talking about twenty-fifth of October twenty twenty two or twenty twenty one? No, actually twenty twenty one. Ah, okay. Then tours, I don't have but um because I do I like to look at those whole two year periods and, and focus on the axis and see what's moving through. For example, mm -hmm. the last one nine years ago, Taurus and Scorpio, the very first um, Scorpio solar eclipse within a month exactly was the end of my marriage. It was just, it was in a day, it was my, my ex was said no more. Right. And, my marriage, and the, the relationship was done. We were married for a while, but we were separated from that moment. That was exactly, that was a moon before the eclipse. And then two years later, two, about two, two weeks after the eclipse, the last eclipse in the access, it was a Scorpio solar eclipse. Um, I met the next relationship I was in, the father of my girls. Mm -hmm. It was a very unhealthy relationship. And so this, it was like a, you know, what are those called? Like the book case. <laughs> bookends of the end of my marriage, the beginning of my next relationship, which, yeah, was very, very difficult time. But, and so in between I was dating and I was learning a lot about myself, but it was a very difficult time anyway. So, but just to see like that was exactly in between the access of this, of the Scorpio and Taurus. Right. So the, 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 this is something that's going to be very strong in your chart, right? Because you're, it's on your ascendant descent. Exactly. And you've got exactly. Chiron and Jupiter. And involved. Chiron is there. So, and I work a lot with Chiron being conjunct my descendant. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so this time around, like being so much older and understanding a lot more of the um, symbolism and working with myself. So now I've been single for almost six years. Mm -hmm. I've really taken time to go in and see what my patterns are, what mm -hmm. am I dealing with, and also just be there for my kids. So it's just been a incubation time for me, myself, mm -hmm. and my, my kids. But since November of 2021, it was just like touching my toes, like I'm ready for a little bit more freedom. So mm -hmm. this month, 2021, the first Taurus eclipse, I went out for the very first time, had a babysitter for the first time in like four years went out with a girlfriend and um oh and started going back to the gym mm -hmm. so like two hours a week of having time for me this was a huge deal that I just having my time after very much sacrificing the last four years and so then since then it's just been steps towards growing that freedom 
for myself. So the last year and a half, um, for example. So now we'll jump to October. Wait, 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 just a second. So we've got the, the degree point. I just wanted to let you know the degree point because it really okay. does stand out in your chart. It was mm. 19th of November, 2021 was a partial lunar eclipse. And yes. that's 27 oh. Taurus and 14 minutes. And okay. of course, square so that, that is a square to your midheaven, your IC and MC, which is significant. You know, when things square these, uh, these major points in the chart, it's really life changing. And it was just that like breaking out of the freedom of just oh, wait, being uh, home. No, that was, yeah, yeah. So that was, yeah, just uh, squaring. Yeah, exactly. So within half a degree. Yeah. That's really intense, right? And um, in conjunct, because I do look at in conjuncts, not everybody uh, does, but I do. And, mm -hmm. and that was also in conjunct Pluto. Okay. In the 12th, which is part of that relationship story. And at that same time, I had Pluto square. I mean, I'm sure Pluto was already squaring my Pluto. Right. Um, so that was a long transit, but. Yeah. So that's been two years of relearning how to be yourself. and Yes. And, and gradually expanding and being okay with not just being mom to the point now where it's like, wow, I really feel this. I really feel back to who I am separate from just being mother of these because also being a single mom I have I do feel these stigmas and I mean I don't even I don't want to say shame but there's this something and especially with dating because a lot of this now has to do with the seventh house throughout these last two years of kind of getting to the point after being in a very unhealthy relationship getting to the point of, okay, I'm ready to date again, even though, you know, and I have my kids because for a while it was just like, where do I draw the line? What, how do I work with all of this? I'm already working with like my three individuals and myself. And so for a long time, I wasn't um, open to mm -hmm. any sort of dating at all to after the last few years in, in step-by-step -step, to the point where I am now, it's just like, yes, I am ready. <laughs> Yeah, I'm opening my heart again. I'm opening who I am and um, and feeling very secure in who I am outside of just being a mom. Yeah, and so it's a really exciting time. I feel it every every couple of weeks even stronger. The sun is coming out in the spring, so it's it's kind of like that energy coming al along with it. Um, the last eclipse in April was in my sixth house. And so, yeah, but, but look at this though. <laughs> I forget the sixth house, but look at this. Yeah. Pluto is squaring that eclipse and, uh, and conjunct your, your Venus. So this is, I mean, if you're not ready to date, you'd better get ready. Cause I think there's going to be something coming up there. I'm yeah. ready. Susan, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> And then, uh, you know, that eclipse was also technically it was uh, in a close enough. Uh, Are we talking about April? Yeah, this is the 20th of April now. So this is a story that's been happening. And um, like I was saying, too, it really tried to take time in these to think about my habits. What am, what am I doing to the situation? Not like what's happening to me, but how am I, you know, uh, putting myself in these situations? So the situation being... A year ago, where that it was like 15 degrees of Taurus, what is this, November, the November lunar eclipse, I went to see a friend in Switzerland for the weekend and had a really beautiful weekend romance, first time in years, mm -hmm. really connected with this beautiful man. And then that was it, you know, I came home there wasn't much contact because of the situation but it was very interesting to connect to someone and then but that that was it I come home back to my responsibilities back to my life and the cord is just very much cut uh-huh and, so, and then the aftermath and there was a next that was right at the beginning of the eclipse and there was the second eclipse and it was really dealing with the emotions of that dealing with the emotions of connecting with a beautiful person and not having anything to grow it was just that so the same exact thing happened to me last week not the same exact thing but went to edinburgh 
met a friend of a friend, completely connected, had a beautiful couple days. And, but for different reasons, that was that. And now I'm home and re and this week dealing with those emotions, like, you know, yeah, feeling those smitten feelings and, and, um, and then seeing what that brings up, like, yeah, like you said, if you're not ready, what are the things that, that I've not, haven't met anyone in Berlin that I was even attracted to for years and years? So what is it about going to another city where someone is maybe unavailable and me being able to open up to this person quite quickly, like magical feelings, and then coming back? You know, so I'm trying that's to... That's an interesting I'm observation, trying. yeah. That is, that's definitely an interesting observation, yeah. And uh, it's, I think you, you should definitely explore a little bit more that 8th of November eclipse um, uh, because that really did, it just triggered everything in your chart. Like it's just incredible how much is, is jumping out from that eclipse in your, in your case. But I think we'll, we'll um, try to keep it to these current ones just so we can, yeah. uh, right. So and it's, and because it's, it's just wrapping up, this axis is finally wrapping up after two yeah. years. Well, it will be in October, but this one, because it is, again, uh, they saw the Scorpio in my first house, very near my ascendant, and then activating the, the Grand Trine. Um, and I'm... March, I was feeling, I think it was with Saturn going into the first house, Pluto. I was very low energy, extremely low energy in March. Mm -hmm. um, I felt just very hormonal and like eating a lot of breads and just not feeling great. And it wasn't so, you know, but then that since the last, the energies of the eclipse came, I feel so much more energized, which <laughs> I was not expecting in eclipse season. Yeah, incredible, yeah. And uh, just, yeah, waking up from the winter. And so I have a very positive outlook on this next one coming up. Excited to see where it goes. I'm also starting school that week. I'm just going back to get my yoga instructor's license. That is a school that I went to for fitness training last year. And that's exciting because it's, it puts me in a schedule, getting yeah. out of the house more, being with adults with like-minded people so I'm definitely looking forward to that and yeah and again summer vibes in Berlin are great and so just having the summer to look forward to yeah but really what's number one on my mind is like sharing uh affection with another human being and after a really long time of not and seeing where that what what pops up yeah, that there's new goals coming here, right? Mars on the North Node. And then and the other little like things I hadn't had time at all for passions of mine, playing guitar, doing different sports that I do um, more and more. And somehow, you know, that my girls are also going through just a, a jump up. So the three and five year old, the three year old is out of diapers this week. So that's a huge Big one. I have all my girls are Scorpio risings too, so we're a house of Scorpio risings, and just a lot more independence that gives me more of the independence. Yeah, that's yeah. nice. Nice fifth. Okay, yeah. so I'm going to just um, pull up the chart now for a moment, and I just want to hear then your story. There we go. We'll come back to the. Um, we'll come back to the. 20th of April eclipse. So then um, we'll have a look at what's going on with you. Just to say to Kemi, like the what she's describing with all this seven house dating and all that, you got Uranus in the seventh house, the same as me. And it is not what I've ever experienced mm -hmm. when it comes to relationships, any relationship with friends, with family with dating or anything like that it's so erratic it's it's it starts and it stops and it's it, it just is no no rhythm at the moment and I just decided I'm just surrendering just surrendering to anything that's got to do with relationships or being disappointed or making any commitment whatsoever just just being because it's it's I find that's hitting um 
the seven house is very hard and it's it maybe i don't know maybe the nodes make it enhance it more but i'm under correction i'm not so certain or maybe it will make it better i i don't know i'm yet to discover the the thing is that uranus takes so long to get through uh sign that it, you're always going to end up with a node in there somewhere it's seven years right so usually yeah. there's some kind of impact either yeah either by south or north node or by square or something there's going to be some kind of interference so yeah i remember years ago i had my uh it was a long time ago like it was uranus and capricorn in the 90s and that changed everything in my relationships all all kinds of things it's true yeah. it's really i mean it was uh, I felt it very positive, but it was also super destabilizing at the same time. It can be both. At some some point, it's it's great, and sometimes it's disappointing um, and quite shocking to yeah. to to have experience with friendships or you know family or anything like that. It's mm -hmm. it, it, there's no one way of how it's doing its thing. It's mm -hmm. just. I think Saturn, you can expect it, you know the rhythm, you know how it's going to um, time frame and everything, but with Uranus, it's, it's not like that. And the seventh house is a grand experience, for me anyway. I've had a um, tremendous amount of change and adjustment to make, yeah. yeah. And the 20th of April, when you mm -hmm. mentioned about, um, I didn't have anything major that I can point um to that particular eclipse that I can say not yet <laughs> yeah maybe I'm still I'm, I'm I think yeah, I'm that, I, mean, I, I, I think things. it would be very very unusual if you don't notice something coming up because this has been on your moon I, I it would be almost it's been square your Venus and conjunct your moon and so I think it might just be too early to say it's yeah. try, it's even sextiling your Jupiter um so yeah this is the challenge with eclipses is that it's not something that we can kind of make an appointment with we don't really know when the thing is going to pan out and it often like I said earlier it just kind of spreads over time in some cases where it's just not really clear where the beginning was and it, it uh, can happen in phases as well yeah. and yet there's still a feeling of before and after somehow so yeah. I think I think we need to hear your story later <laughs> when I started working oh, so yeah. I started working the week before of the lunar eclipse in Scorpio um, in May 2022. Right, okay. So, so I started working. Degree. Hang on. So that was at 25 Scorpio. So you started working then. And is yes, that the job that you've just left now? Yes. And I've just quit my job just before the, the following the same lunar eclipse in Scorpio. Right. Except that now we're in a sixth house eclipse, you see? So this is the other thing. It might be that this is now the new thing. It's not necessarily, I mean, you have Venus, oh, sorry, uh, Mercury and Uranus basically conjunct the eclipse of November, the 8th, 15, almost 16 degrees. Um, and so this could be a continuation of that, but with a new like so there's that now that's changing and now we're in the sixth house now something new's coming in for your day-to-day -day experience because there's something really significant happening in your sixth house um, I do. and I'm, I'm having a battle within myself whether i should become a lady of leisure or i should become the workhorse that i've always been <laughs> leisure <laughs> that's, a, that's a sixth house question to answer so here's here's your the ruler of your sixth house there's mara's kind of going Oh, it's nice to be at home. <laughs> it's nice to wear slippers and bake cookies. And that's in the ninth house of your purpose, right? So that's a that's for sure a signature of your questioning. I, I'm not sure if you'll get your answer out of that, but your Mars is is uh, in opposition. The Mars, I mean, uh, transiting is in opposition to your natal Mars. Yeah. And so there's definitely a, a, a different way of showing up after this eclipse because your natal Mars is like, go, go, go no time for a holiday what's a holiday okay we've got saturn and chiron in the sixth in the fifth house there's no such thing as a holiday moon in the sixth house mars in capricorn and then opposing this 
kind of like, oh, come on, let's just stay in kind of Mars in Cancer, right? So maybe- travel, travel nine house, you know? Yeah. I sit at home, maybe go to home, but somewhere else. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm kind of getting the vibe there. And that Mars is trining your ascendant. So I think that could be something to ponder. At the very least, you know, give it an, give it a couple of months of an eclipse cycle <laughs> and enjoy. Yeah, uh, take take a break from that Mars and Capricorn. That's work a work a workaholic. Yeah. Um, are we ready to move to the fifth of May? See what's coming up. Yeah. All right. So oh, that's exciting. Look at that. We've got Venus on Jupiter there. I'm getting very excited about Jupiter, to be mm -hmm. honest. Mm -hmm. I'm extremely excited about Jupiter for some reason. Yeah. Um, you know, and also like having Pluto sitting on my Venus. Um, it's now that it's moved a little bit. Um, you know, Jupiter rules your fifth house. Um, it rules your second house as well. So income and, and family and... Uh, uh, it's also a health house as well as a money house and then the fifth house of course is love and creativity and so on and that jupiter is moving into your house of relationship now and um so it's hard by uranus and i'm hoping that that is actually going to bring some peace and some Oh, I'm not sure Jupiter Uranus is going to bring much peace. I'm uh, sorry to break that. But expansion. expansion. Yeah, we'll call it expansion. I'm not expansion. sure expansion is the word that I would use with Jupiter Uranus. Same thing with Jupiter and the North Node. Um, I think we're again in the situation of expecting the unexpected. The North Node, I tend, and same thing with the outer planets in general, I tend to take those as not generally speaking easy uh, energies there's always something that is, that requires adjustment but it's again the adjustment doesn't have to be like oh this is awful i have to adjust to it it's just like so different and so big and so um potentially unexpected or or out of the norm that there is a required adjustment you know which can be anything from you know meeting somebody but it can also be just realizing something that is so uh, helpful or so life altering uh so yeah i'm not sure about the jupiter <laughs> the, the other problem is that we're all living in this insane insane world yeah. um, and so our private hopes and desires are all very deeply influenced by a world that is really volatile right now and i think that what i think it was Camille that said earlier about this idea of keeping an open space for anything to come in and giving yourself more time and rest and an opportunity to kind of cushion whatever might be happening is I think a really wise plan right now because you know again we we are seeing real signatures for war and uh, and real drama in the world around us and economic and financial issues uh, at go go and so it's really uh a good time to obviously live your life and carry on with hope and um, and engagement but at the same time uh, keeping a sense of well I am living in this it's part of the world I live in and things that I take for granted may not be there tomorrow and this is I think not, to world. not have any expectations yeah. I think is a good way of saying yeah. it too this is also how I see the the moon uh, the lunar eclipse here in Scorpio on the south node it's really allowing things you know just letting go letting go letting go letting go of fear letting go of ideas letting go of all kinds of things because what we're being pulled into here shortly with jupiter going into taurus and then and then coming up against that north node we don't know it's certainly going to be something different and new uh and then of course and would that include as well as um would that also include letting go of beliefs I would biased say, belief systems. Yeah, I would say more with Taurus, more values, more your what you what you value. Um, you know, if you think about uh, throughout history, people have lost their physical possessions, but they managed to stay together as a family, or you know, they managed to save the cat or whatever. You know, like that. What do you? Or, or to let go of the belief system, as in the image that we all have in our mind of how things should be, versus the reality of things and I think we can get stuck in this belief system of 
things having to be the way that we had that picture in our mind of that white picket fence and and believed that that's what our life would look like in the future yeah. quite yeah. often when we I, get I there I see that more realize... related to the Saturn in Pisces rather than the eclipses themselves yeah. or the nodes uh just in terms yeah. of what do I believe um I think that's where Saturn is like get clear on that you know mm. think about it get real um there's a lot finally of, yeah there's a lot of wishful thinking especially in the astrology world I find there's an enormous amount of wishful thinking it's like ah the world is everything will be fine up and we're all we're all gaining or, consciousness yeah. and honest to god I've heard that for I think now about 15 years and I'm not really <laughs> seeing evidence of it uh, this was the big thing around 2012 everybody was like oh we're all waking up and it's all going to be amazing <laughs> it's like really we're going into that. Aquarius you know the age of yeah, you know um yeah. free love and all that stuff no yeah. no I think we gotta do we gotta do that work ourselves which I which I yeah. can I think if we're just coming back um Ronit's going to be doing the work in the day-to-day -day life but if we're just taking it metaphorically as the north now moving into Aries I see that as where I personally as an individual where we all as individuals need to step up and and come to a place of understanding what I need to do uh, what I need to uh, as an individual as an individual Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and also recognizing my influence on the situation whether it be uh my in yeah, individual like relationship or my own life but also what do i contribute internationally or globally or collectively to this whole scene to this whole story uh anyway we've cut you off on it we didn't finish hearing about this 5th of may uh, story because we got so excited about all these different things going on in your chart <laughs> which um yeah so here we have that mars by the way again so now mars of course is still ruling uh jupiter which at the time of this eclipse is of course still in um the sixth house and even more conjuncts your moon so that Mars is still playing a big role here. Mars from the ninth, trining your Neptune. So I don't know, I'd say you're in for a real different energetic situation. Jupiter is in a lovely sex style to your natal Jupiter as well with Venus on top of it. So this seems more like a spring of, you know, dare I even say debauchery. I think you should just go for it and enjoy you know because this is that energy it's kind of like a what the hell kind of energy just go and the jupiter is squaring your venus it's a really nice energy for a wee bit of self-indulgence which probably could be a bit welcome with the intensity of the last couple of years yes absolutely absolutely i'm i'm ready for it <laughs> yeah plus I think that's my, my job i really have this notion of you know i i don't want to have any strings attached and i i just want to be free in, yeah. in a way where i'm not obligated to anybody or anything and and if something comes up i'm i'm ready for it yeah like i prepare the ground for for, for me like you know putting the spikes in and and jolting forward yeah to this new round because i i feel that i need that um, south node to leave please my yeah. first house <laughs> um it's it's been a long hard ride to say the least yeah how would you describe that last year and a half for you in terms of the south node through the first house wow it's been a roller coaster of deep emotional um and, and experiences of leaving my children, my home for 33 years, my friends, my comfort, and deciding to take a challenge by leaving. I didn't have to go anywhere. I could have stayed. I could have wow. had a perfect life. But I've like I've pushed myself to, and I don't know if it was the Saturn that was that I knew I was coming onto my Saturn return. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to start, I'm going to do preparation work and I'm going to do it myself. So I, I don't have the, the, 
I don't know. I don't have the answer to say why. People ask me, why did you leave? You know, like, what was wrong? Where were you living? You know, and I, I don't have an answer. I just had this push in me to change. I needed to change. Yeah. And, and Scorpio it, is very instinctive energy, right? It's it's often really difficult to understand your own motivations in that energy of Scorpio. That's kind of one of the signatures of a Scorpio. Yes. Oh, and but, it's just the impulse. You get the impulse and it's like, let's do this. And then you the same the token, we're very, we're very fixed. You yeah, know. But, but you're fixed in, in a different way. I see in a different way in terms of your, um, the fixity is often in terms of emotions and in terms of... Um, the way that you feel maybe attached to things so that you continue to stay with things but it doesn't mean that you don't have these instinctive impulses and that is in your case particularly the mars ruled moon in aries is also where you get that impulsive quality so you've got double mars going there to say don't sit down you know and yeah. then mars is in capricorn which is a strong strong mars so it's ruled you know ruling your ascendant ruling your moon it's kind of this feeling of if I'm not comfortable, I need to keep moving, you know, physical movement. I need to get out. I need to go. So I it, in many change. ways, it's, hmm? I, I do love change. I don't like to be stagnant or do the same thing in routine. Yeah. I'm very like, like I'm, I'm very adaptable. Yeah. Yeah. That's that cardinal moon energy. Right. And your sun is a mutable sign. Yeah. Um, so there's that, you know, sun in Sagittarius is literally describing somebody on the move you know it's uh, so yeah. yeah okay well interesting then thank you then for thank that you. um who's ready to go um uh, sharon do you want to give us a little insight into what you're going on going through yeah um in one word i got the right show let me just double check that we've got the right chart here so 18 november mm -hmm. 1970 Correct. Fremantle. Okay, good. Um, so let's start with the 20th of, uh, oh, hang on, sorry. There we go back to the, the first eclipse. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm a little lost with regards to the eclipse cycle because I, I'm just listening to you, Laddie's talk, there was mention of one last year. Was it November of last year? Yeah, November 8th. There was one at 15, well, it's actually 1559, so practically 16 degrees of Taurus. Mm. And um, yeah, and we had a two degree uh, Scorpio eclipse on the 25th and a 25 degree Scorpio eclipse on 16th of May, so roughly almost a year ago. And exactly one year yeah. ago, we had the 10 degree Taurus. It was also, it was the 30th of April. That one. See, my degree of my son is 25, I think, yeah. from memory mm -hmm. of, of Scorpio. So, yeah, there's hmm, there's been a lot going on in particular in my relationships, my intimate relationships, mm -hmm. I, I guess you would describe them as. Mm -hmm. And it's funnily enough with someone who's also a Scorpio son. And, um, yeah, this time last year I would have put money on the fact that there was nothing there and it was dead in the water mm -hmm. and here we are doing the exact opposite mm -hmm. and it's also been very secretive too it's That's been a Scorpionic. relationship good good yeah. old Scorpio. good <laughs> it's been a relationship that boxes. i had to keep secret yes so I that, yeah, so that, um eighth of november eclipse was very strongly connected to your venus and jupiter you know so the yeah that would have been when he arrived back on the scene actually oh, out of nowhere there you are and then saturn is there across the way to fix it in place you see so saturn there at yes degrees opposing that you know so that would have been where the north node was so the south node on venus jupiter in uh, and then saturn fixing it in place there it feels very much like we're doing things over again but in a different way mm -hmm. um as in a more permanent long-term kind of manner versus the way it perhaps was structured before okay. so it's kind of a little deja vu-ish um, but at the same time a little bit taboo-ish because of the the secretive factor I've just been a little concerned about letting my family um, and friends know about it 
because mm-hmm. I didn't want the interference of their opinions and uh, their biases to affect me in any way. But I'm now at the point where I'm really over this covert thing. It's becoming extremely inconvenient <laughs> to remain um, so secretive. So, Well, yeah, look, you've got, you've got Mars here in the eighth house of secrets as well. And that mm. Mars is trining your Venus at this eclipse on the 20th, right? Mars is trining your Venus. This is not cool somehow. Like it's not, it's not comfortable in those two hidden no. places. It means that something is brewing and that mm. Mars is soon to come over your, uh, your natal moon just in the days after the eclipse. And um, in fact, it's at the second eclipse. We'll have a look at that. But then if you look at that, Mars also in square, uh, to Uranus and your natal Mars, there's eleventh uh, house is your hopes and dreams, and that's in Libra for you. That's really important because it's ruled by that Venus in in um, Scorpio natally. So there's a lot yes. there that's going to have to. And look where Venus is now. You see, so there's a lot there that's going to have to be uh, dealt with in terms of this specific issue that you just raised, and that, that this eclipse cycle is likely to pull up. So let's have yeah, a look. I literally that. feel a bit ill in the tummy about it even. I have a, a real visual um, <clears throat> response to things. I literally feel, I literally physically feel them. And if it's going to be positive or negative or, or what have you, I, I tend to go by feeling more mm-hmm. than anything. Yeah, you've got a moon in Cancer. That's kind of normal. So here's um, now this is where Mars got to within the two weeks. So by five days from now, basically, Mars is going to be conjunct your moon. Um, and that happens to be on the midheaven of the eclipse if we take it from the universal time. But it doesn't necessarily mean it's like that for you in Australia. Um, so should I lock myself down and, and lock my doors and, and no no, no i'm not giving you i'm not giving you advice here i'm just pointing it out so more, I'd, I'd rather more hear from you how all this is yeah. affecting you because this is the, the whole point is to try and understand your how you're mm. relating to all of these things and i think also the fact that you know it, it is also the the south node i think finally the the stage of really letting go of a lot of a lot of things actually is this is my my final curtain call so to speak my final window of opportunity to let go um consciously before things are just taken when I'm not ready I, I seem to get a sense of letting go of a lot of things and I I'm assuming that this Chiron um you know that's I think I'm having the Chiron return when it was at 14 degrees. So I, uh, I felt no, that I was. Your Chiron is at six. Your Chiron is at six degrees. So that was a while back. Your Chiron return would have been like 2020. Oh, gee, okay. For some mm-hmm. reason, I don't know what I was looking at then. I thought it was at 14 degrees. You have Lilith. I don't know where I've got that. Lilith is at 14. Maybe I've got maybe I've got them mixed up I just feel like I've been dealing with a lot of <clears throat> past trauma dealing with it in some manner so yeah and this is the south node in the 12th house especially Scorpio it's got a lot to do with digging kind of deeper you know digging deep in uh, this is the hidden stuff um where Mars has been yeah. basically since the 25th of March so it's all hidden, yes. hidden, unconscious stuff, and that certainly relates to the past. It even relates to ancestral stuff. Um, Saturn and, is and Mars. When Mars was in uh, Gemini through that retrograde, most of this um, resolution and um, healing I felt was done throughout that retrograde, right? As well being in the seventh because yeah, Gemini is my seventh house. Mm-hmm. So it felt very long winded being that long retrograde that it, that Mars had there. Yeah. So yeah, very similar to what the other ladies are saying that it feels like a cum- culmination of a lot of things that are all now about to end off or be tied up in some way or tied. Yeah. Tied up, tied mm-hmm. off in some way, meaning, you know, I will be able to move on from where mm-hmm. I've felt like 
I've been stagnant yeah. for quite some time. Great. Um, but, yeah, so, having a lot in in that 12th house. Yeah, it um, means that there's been an enormous amount of uh, a year and a half or even, well, like Camille says, it's a bigger cycle because there's overlap on both ends, right? And we're even going to go into what's the one in October is the fifth of, fifth degree of Taurus that we're still, it doesn't connect to your planets there. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're still really dealing with this from November of 2021 through uh, end of October, 2023. So it's, um, it's a long process. It's and, and half of and it's, all been, it's all been hidden or secreted in some way. It's mm -hmm. been things that I haven't been able to talk about in public mm -hmm. or, or, you know, make it known. I've just yeah. had to deal with it internally. Yeah. And I'm really sick of it. Really mm -hmm. sick of it. Mm. Normally, but, I quite yeah, like and then of course that, that's that twelfth house where the south node is, but there's the sixth house where the north node is, which means something new every day. Something new has to be done on a practical level, right? That's a very practical energy. The sixth house, so mm. that's that uh, where, where that the polarity. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to open the Australian chart. That we here we have um, wow. a chart for the first of January, 1901. Okay, so that's the one I, I'm referring to for Australia. Let's go with the solar eclipse first. Okay, so we have a solar eclipse now um, on the Australian chart. What is going on in Australia? So this is for me very significant, you know, because it, those, the angles for a country, especially the angles are incredibly important, very sensitive points. Uh, for individuals, obviously, too. But when we're talking about a collective, it's even more important to look at what's going on with the angles because it's for the country as a whole. And then if you're looking at the sun, for example, that's the leader. And then if you're looking at the moon, that's the people uh, in, typically. And then so here yep. we have Pluto on the midheaven in the first approach to a conjunction. So um, so this is quite different, you know, some new, because Australia is really showing up very differently in the world. Um, and we also have the eclipse of the 20th on the ascendant itself. And so again, there's something really new here. Um, that is, uh, I think, going to be emphasized again in the autumn. And it's going to be something that we're going to feel when the nodes shift because that's going to, you know, the passage of the North Node over the Ascendant is always really significant. Then we have the South Node on Lilith conjunct the Descendant. So what's going on there? <laughs> and then the natal, uh, just for, for extra excitement, we've got the natal Pluto on the IC of the Eclipse chart. Holy yikes, man. And this is, a, there's something going on. See. I mean, I, if I just want to, I'll just throw my two cents in about again, yeah, go for it. talking about insanity, global insanity. <laughs> we, much like Germany, we see Australia doing literally everything that goes against its best interests. Yes. So it is yes. following a policy of another country that is literally destroying its own best interests with its biggest trading partner and the biggest power in the Pacific where it happens to be located. And I just look at that and I'm just like, what are you doing? And so this Pluto on the midheaven, the eclipse on the ascendant, the south node crossing the descendant, for me as a country that represents uh, letting go of old alliances, but not necessarily in a harmonious way. You know, this is a, we're now looking at a north node eclipse coming up for the next couple of years that is Mars ruled uh, on the North Node, where we've had a South Node Mars ruled eclipse for the last couple of years. Uh, this is where I think things start to get really heated up uh, with the North Node eclipse in, in a Mars ruled sign. So mm. interesting days for Australia. I'm yeah, I think there's a, a, a lot changing with um, our economy, even though they, mm -hmm. they put out this story or this narrative um, that this is, you know, supposedly what we're working towards, but in mm -hmm. actual fact, it's inverted. It's the complete opposite. Yeah. Um, it's just that the majority of the people don't see that it, it's all inverted and that's right. all lies. It's insane stuff. So, so your economy is here, of course, in the second house and um, the North Node has been going through there. But more importantly, 
so Uranus has been going through there since May of 18, May 2018. And Uranus it changes, I think, with regards to the cryptocurrency or the tokenization, the, the great financial reset. I think Australia has been very involved, but co covertly. It's not something that the public are actually being made aware of, but I think they've been part of the testing uh, with regards to the new monetary policy and system that they're, they're hoping to put into place once the perfect crisis comes along. Is there a digital currency planned for Australia? It's something that hasn't really been put out there a great deal. Uh -huh. they, they talk about it as if, you know, that it would be advantageous. Okay. Yet if you're following any of the crypto uh, sources and channels, you can see that they've very much been involved in it for quite some time now. Yeah, but this is this is different. This is the government issued um, uh, coin, meaning that because this is what's happening the here CBDC. In the, and in the and in the states, this is the yeah. I think Australia. Australia likes to do it a little bit differently. They don't like to let the 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 public or the citizens know um, what's happening. It's just always there's a veil put over our, our economic subjects and. Um, it's always been, the narrative has always been, well, it'll depend on, you know, the Reserve Bank, it'll depend on um, inflation, it'll depend on this and that, whereas in actual fact, they've always been in control of that and they've always been um, manipulating that. But it's a hidden thing here. It's it's never really spoken about and it, and I've only discovered about these kind of, subjects by looking at other countries who are reporting on what's happening here in Australia and I just think wow well you know obviously you guys something know that you know something that we don't even know here because it's not something that's being allowed to be put out there it's it's very much a hidden um I think we all get, we all get better news from foreign sources these days <laughs> It's true. I it's think we're true. we're living in such an incredibly propagandized time that we're not getting yeah. uh, any clarity from our own people. You definitely do not watch the, the mainstream point. news if you want to know what's going on. Definitely so the don't next watch eclipse, the mainstream. Hmm. The next eclipse is slightly different for Australia. Then we have Jupiter on the ascendant. So what is coming up? Is there an election or something that's supposed to be coming up? Or what? You just yeah, had you, you had one, and then in, in a couple of months ago, you had one. Yeah, we ours are different with regards to the federal and the, the state. Um, they kind of work in um, one. One is every other cycle, and the other ones in the middle. So, pretty much every two years, there's a, a major election. Um, and then it all goes down to districts and your local yeah, government yeah, but I mean, as well. Now, let's focus on this eclipse here. If we focus on the eclipse, is there something coming up here? Because something's provoking the moon, which represents the people. And that already, um, since last year even, as well. So I'm just trying to figure out what was going on. And then that'll happen, uh, will it be in Libra? No. People wa actually waking up to what's really been going on, perhaps? Uh, well, no. I, you're a lot the of angry people. <laughs> so yeah. I'm trying to get it's to It's funny this, how, but... yeah, it's funny how a lot of things are now coming out with regards to the truth of the matter two years after they were actually occurring. Um, and so maybe you know, this is something that's going to happen here in terms of something changing public opinion because this is with regards to second house issues right so second house issues mm. is values it's money it's uh, yeah. all the things that have been public opinion uh yeah i don't think it's so much public opinion that i would put somewhere else but the values of the nation are here in the second house and the moon is there and that is the the values of the people are very much pragmatic it's about uh, Taurus, right so Second house Taurus. It's a this is a, a, a Aries um, ascendant, which means that the houses have extra uh, emphasis, if you like, because yeah. they're natural zodiac. So we have a moon in Taurus. That's an exalted moon in Taurus in the second house. So the the values of Australia show up to be very um, material, very very much about resources that can be used, very much about 
um, you know, natural resources and um, and security, financial security, being part of the national sort of values, if you like, the country's values. And now we've got Uranus coming up to that. So last summer, it already did. Mm. And now it's coming up again. So kind of to check in with that uh, and it'll be crossing. It's not at this eclipse, but it's, it is already in orb of conjunction at the eclipse. So yeah, well, you I don't think know Australia what rides on the back of, of its um, resources, um, <laughs> the, yeah, the common I, wealth. Yeah, I'm just wondering if that's going to be something now that is going to be triggered. Is there any kind of issue now that's like a debate around issues around resources? I know there's been some stuff in the news about mining, for example, about the... When it comes to mining, yeah, it's it's like mining overrides any kind of issue that's going on. It wasn't until the the uh, the beer bug started to affect the mining industry until things actually got pulled back and um, they were made exempt. You know, people didn't have to do what everybody else had to do if they were within that mining industry. So when it comes to those um, those topics in this country, it seems to have its its own authority. Mm -hmm. It overrides anything that's going on. Okay. I don't like to uh, let anything affect that. Um, but oh, yeah, I, I just think we're we're all in living in delusion here and uh, illusion. Nothing is real. Um, and you really have to seek out um, the truth elsewhere. You're not going to get told it here. All right. I'm going to just switch over to Germany now. So, Petra, mm -hmm. can you come and help us try and figure out what the heck is going on in Germany? Uh, there's a lot of Germany is going to change, too, in terms of its second house stuff. What else is going on there? There's so much coming up here with this 20th of April eclipse. I think if, hmm, it affects maybe the um, the foundation, the the roots, and the um, and sometimes the 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 mind of the people will. Um, yeah, if, if we just I'll, I'll just be uh, um, just to be clear, we can't read yeah. the national chart in the same way as we read a personal chart. So the fourth house for a mundane chart is uh, is land, it's property. And it's the country, physical country itself. Okay. Um, and so this is what's really being, look at that. I mean, this is really going to be triggered. Uh, this is very much what's going on right now in terms of the war uh, going on um, close by, right? And now we're seeing, um, this is the first hint of something new coming in here in, the, in, the, in terms of the eclipse energy. Uh, for the last 18 years. Yeah, the fifth house is uh, investment. Fifth house is uh, where you put, the country puts its money, where it is taking risks as well. It is, um, uh, fifth house is uh, the children, women and children in general, even students. You can include in the fifth house in terms of the, the way the country deals with women, children, students, and things like that. Um, so very interesting uh, change seems to be going on there. What 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 did you say? Um, how do you read the fourth house um, in a nation for, chart? It's for the fourth house. How about it's, it's land, it's, property, it's, land. Yeah, because um, yeah, they want uh, it's they want that people um, sell their property and they, you know, it's very tough to get property yeah. nowadays. And the farmers and too. You uh... want, yeah, even if you want to um, make your own stuff in the garden and land, it's... They're not allowing it's, that? Yeah, it's, it's kind of, it's so many restrictions that you think yeah. uh, it's stupid. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's yeah. really... Um, You'll own nothing and be happy. Really get it. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. We're coming up with this, maybe the next eclipse. I mean, this Pluto is just going to be lingering here now. We, it's already been over uh, two years that Pluto has been 
menacing that Jupiter there, but it's now going to be lingering the next two years quite strongly conjunct that Jupiter. So that for me, I find really uh, interesting because that's the house of the economy. Um, and it's definitely, uh, you know, suggesting that there's something that has to completely change and that's going to be, I, and that when we look at a national chart, we want to look a little bit more negatively, less optimistically as, the, in, you know, compared to an individual's chart, you have much less, um, you, much less willpower because the, the chart itself is the expression of a big body of energy, a big body of people. Yeah, but there's a big change in the company because everyone is going out of Germany. They have so many um, companies. Are, um, what? Yeah. How do you call that word? You know, they are, have to close. Yeah, they're going back. Going out to different countries mm -hmm. because we can't. They can't pay the the, the cost of the energy, yeah. and so that means all this prosperity and 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 the work we've done it's shutting down. And now they say. I don't know what's what the new economy should be like. They say maybe it's like um, pharma, or I don't know. You know what I mean? It's really yeah, yeah, yeah. it's very it's destabilizing. Yeah. I I heard a couple of weeks ago or a couple of months ago, I can't remember. There was a country, a company in uh, Bavaria, maybe somewhere in Germany. It was um, in the south, I think, where they had established themselves something like. I'm going to say 1635 and they went bankrupt. I was like, really? Wow. I mean, you can't help them. It was a metalworks. You know, this is like yeah. what we think of with Germany is we think of heavy industry, right? Metalworks since 1630 or something. I can't remember. Um, I want to point out ask that North to, Node in the can I, just, can I ask you something? We're looking at Jupiter um, in the second in Aquarius, would you if you do it, like you said, it's not like a personal chart, but would you say like looking at Germany, doing uh, working in the, the industry of technology mm -hmm. and being very um, auspicious and successful, would that be Jupiter in Aquarius in the second house? The, well, the, the money comes in from high like technology, but in vehicles and progress. Yeah, progress for sure in, in uh, innovation and so on. Innovate, but, yeah. um, you know, that Jupiter doesn't mind so much being in Aquarius. It's uh, got no particular uh, dignity there, but it's also um, retrograde. And so often doesn't give, it gives kind of perverse um, uh, consequences, let's say. And that's also the house of values uh, as well. So, the, the, you know, this uh, a kind of symbolism, you know, the, after the war, a, a need to revise values. Jupiter is also always going to represent the, the judiciary, for example, in a country, the people who are like the uh, academics and the, the thinkers, the philosophers, and so on. It looks like there's a re revision of values uh, in the, at the end of the war. Um, and that's in a strong trine to the sun and in an in conjunct to Uranus. Um, I don't know, I see it like that more like the, the industry itself um, is, uh, yeah, it's innovative and so on, but it's not necessarily uh, giving the results. And the, the one thing that's very interesting about Germany uh, is the fact that it did so heavily rely on Russia so again, another um, another indicator of insanity, where a country like this whole Nord Stream pipeline thing, you know, a country allows this thing to happen. Um, actually, if you don't mind, I just have to pull this up because I want to. I have the North Stream Nord Stream pipeline chart, and I want to push put that up there because I want to understand astrologically why Germany would allow something like that to happen without actually doing anything about it and uh yeah I'm not asking why and, and yeah. you know it's, it's saying yes yeah. and they why, asked why in the UN and they said no we don't want to make a research no, let's not it. make a fuss it's just the biggest environmental disaster in Europe yeah. forever but but isn't and it just a part of the agenda that sure yeah, yeah but I want to know it I want to understand it from the astrological point of view I'm trying mm. to understand everything here with an understanding of what is actually energetically triggering these these things um so here's where 
um, for example, we have the, the Mars in the sixth house. The sixth house in a country's chart is the military. It's things like uh, mm -hmm. labor um, resources. It's the, um, like, of course, it is also conflicts. It's also um, uh, all kinds of contrary issues. And now you're in Germany. The sixth house is ruled by Mercury, which is there. It's retrograde. And, um, and of course, Mercury represents business and commerce. And so here we've got Mars just boom right there, um, which for me is quite telling in terms of a transit chart. This is exactly the moment the Danish, because it's, it's set for Denmark because this was when the Danes picked up on the vibrations of the explosion, the seismic oh, okay. uh, explosion underwater. That was the first one. Then there was another one two hours later. And so this is the chart for that event. Um, and so here we see Jupiter um, really at the midpoint, basically between Lilith and Eris. Um, you know, this is, this is quite significant. Chiron is on the moon. The moon represents the people of Germany, the public. Um, and then we have Eris on the, on the North Node. So Eris is discord. Eris is the goddess of disruption, discord, yeah. uh, uh, war. We have the ascendant uh, of the event conjunct Pluto. I mean, it's just a phenomenal chart. And um, Saturn is close to the descendant. It's not a very strong conjunction, but still relevant. And uh, yeah, I just see this as something that is incredibly, un you know, underhanded, undermining the the country itself it's phenomenal we have the north node also at the midpoint between the natal mars and uh, and uh, the ic so the ic is always going to represent the the sort of sense of the security of a country the the home base as it were mm -hmm. the mentally or psychologically of a country and the mc how they stand out in the world um, spicy Spicy is the word. So I think this, yeah. if we come back to now, uh, where were we? The 5th of May one. I think we're going to see the, we're going to see results of that because if we compare, we, now we've got the moon illuminating something about this. Um, Uranus has just crossed over the Mars there. So, um, I mean, it's just baffling. I've been studying international relations since 1985 and yeah. I, look at these things and I'm like, there's no time in history where such a series of countries have completely given up their just national interest. Had, had no balls, just no. had no balls. I, I, the only, it's just, mis it's crazy. And I, the only conclusion I can come to, which makes any sense is that the global rulership is so compromised and yes. so, completely out of sync with the average person that they don't mm. even see the damage that they're doing or they don't care mm. yeah. i don't uh, care yeah so um did you want to say anything more petra about germany because that might be might be things that i'm not sure of or i'm not seeing i think you already said the main things yeah okay did you want to tell anything about your own experience of the eclipses have you got any interesting yeah, um, more than um, when I, I feel eclipses or um, I'm not so good with um, dates, I already uh, or the structure of dates, but I feel I feel things that um, so that for the eclipse, um, the 20th of April, the one there was something like um, that I yeah. There are so many new ideas coming. I was at a conference where they were dealing with, um, yeah, how to, yeah, help people in the environment, how to get, um, how you can um, make the change inside yourself. And every, it's very, it was very practical and very connecting with like-minded people. That was like such a creative uh, process. That was very getting new, new theories out of this agenda you know what's going on and looking behind and and you feel that in Germany there's so many people underneath they are already inventing new things there's a little small group I would say right. but um, but it's still um, because you have that heavy weight now on the other side because you have 
you have the both sides of a thing, there's already a little plant uh, dealing with this pressure which is coming up to the people. So, right. and, and, You're talking um, with regards to the, the just the season of the eclipse or one particular eclipse or, or another, or it's just generally now it, you're it, feeling that? Yeah, it comes yeah. from from last year. It started last year strongly okay. for me. Uh, it, it's a little bit a mixture of the country and myself, my experience uh -huh, uh -huh. So, of the eclipse. So um, that I, yeah, I come up to people to get more um, things. What uh, for me? What is going on behind the scenes? What helps me to look deeper i'm already looking i already have that mind what's behind i have to ask questions and questions yeah. to what makes sense why i'm here in the world that's right. always the questions i'm i'm asking myself all the time what what can i do what i can bring so and um that was a, and i found that eclipse very um for me it was upbringing because there was so um i was prepared oh, i was ready for 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 uh, new things or oh, yeah. what's coming oh, and dealing with the energies maybe it's like yeah and it looks like your your um the south node has just crossed your your midheaven in the month before so you would have been feeling that in march already and maybe the end of february already so so that's definitely wanting something new, wanting a new sense of, and that's also about security. Um, the, the North Node over your IC security and, and your emotional connection to, to what makes you feel secure, your value. Yes. Well. So that's this is really, value. I had a big push, I think, inside that I find uh, the security inside myself. It's just, uh, yeah, you say that, it's, uh, it's, but I really feel it. You know, that was a really, it's a good feeling. I really feel strong mm -hmm. security inside myself. The last, I think in the last two years, I, I really get a push for it. Great. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. It's the North Node going through your sixth house. It's really um, very good for that sense of taking charge of things, taking responsibility for things. You have a good Venus as well. Strong Venus. She's in the 11th. She's in her sign of rulership. So that rules that sixth house, which means that when things happen in your sixth house, they tend to be well supported, you know, so that's quite good. Yeah, and I have a new, I think maybe a new perspective on my everyday life. I don't look for big things. It's just that the things I do, they're little, but I like them. I do it with a different attitude, maybe. It's like this. And that was for me a big change. Normally I was looking for, oh, I have to do this. This Something has to be exciting. like this yeah <laughs> but now it's more calm yeah. but for me it's more peaceful so great 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 well we'll see what then the the next eclipse does just have a look at the um at the 5th of may just to wrap it up um so yeah so that's a similar story the uh the node is still on um, I'm still roughly on the MCIC axis for you. Uh, it seems like the April eclipse seems to have had more impact. Saturn is in opposition to your Mars, which is really empowering, brings a lot of dynamism. Okay. Uh, on a good day, it can also on a bad day, it can bring some challenges, but it's, uh, it's good if, for that sense of can do, you know, that willpower. That's actually squaring your moon. So Mars, when uh, Saturn comes back at the end of the year, uh, it's going to go backwards towards that uh, two degree point again. Um, and as, as it gets to zero degrees, it's going to be both in opposition to your Mars, like November, October, November, December into January, that's also going to be squaring your moon. So I think lots of energy there for a desire to change your emotional nature will, will be affected for sure. Pluto is also at the time of the eclipse there, the, uh, both of them, Pluto is sextiling your moon as well, still in orb. 
and Neptune is also in a trine to your moon, and you're you're still in the orb of the trine to Neptune. So it's definitely a time where you could really start to reinvent things. And Venus on the 5th of May eclipse is also on your descendant, which is really nice, making new connections. So, um, right. Good stuff, everybody. Thank you for this. Anything else? Yeah. All right. Well, um, we'll have to hear from you in the comment section, then you can update everybody. <laughs> after the fact that let us know exactly what was going on and how it all panned out and then we'll meet again uh next month and have a look at the maybe at jupiter moving into taurus and see what comes up with that um things are shifting with the the nodes uh colliding with jupiter it should be a very interesting time the end of may so we can have a look at that all and right that ongoing um pluto square to the nodes yeah, we'll be working with too. All year, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this year. Mm. And a lot of the people uh, randomly that I'm looking at their charts now were all born in 86 and they're all having a, a nodal return. So funny. Nothing is random. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> is random. I always find this when people come to me. It's like, oh, there's always this cluster. There's a cluster of people, like whenever the nodes shift, I get the cluster in the nodal uh, axis. Mm. Or it's always this. No such thing as coincidences. <laughs> they always come, they come, they feel the energy and then they're like, what's going on? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, Why? Yeah. You know, you can help each, the, the, the generation I'm seeing the most now is this um, 60s, the early 60s, 61 mm. and 62, where there was this phenomenal Aquarius stellium mm. in January and February, particularly of 62, it was just incredible. So I've almost yeah. accomplished all 12 houses now with all the different people coming. They're all going, you know, they're all being affected by what's going on. Oh, in a powerful way. Yeah. yeah. Who goes just entering into that um, just to. You oh, would I say my that. Cousin, my cousin was born in March of 62, and I work with her. And yeah. So that's anyway, kind of, I know what you're talking about. Also, some of the planets have moved on um, mm -hmm. by March of 62, but there's, there's still oh, a, okay. there's she a, has, there's a stellium for sure, but yeah. this is like a monster stellium in Aquarius. It's just, it's kind of insane how much energy is there in the beginning of the 60s, which is very much a 60s signature. Mm. Right? It was kind of like, Crashing, yeah, yeah. crashing the party yeah. well yeah i'm not i don't yeah i'm just that. saying you know yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. they were saying mm -hmm. yeah it certainly helped somebody write the lyrics to a song that's yeah. for sure <laughs> but um but yeah it's definitely a description of a very new era of energy uh, for sure but those uh those passages are uh, are now being triggered by the pluto to so all of the that whole yes. vibe of the early 60s mm -hmm. The whole vibe of the 40s as well, really strongly triggered in opposition because Pluto was in uh, in Leo at that time. So there's all this all the stuff that was going on post-war, including Germany, uh, yeah. things that were created yes. after the war are now being kind of disassembled as mm. Pluto moves forward into Aquarius. My son's um, he has Aquarius rising. And he's Pluto, um, well, Pluto is conjuncting his Neptune on zero degree Aquarius. Right. right. Um, as we speak. And he's he's only 24 years old. Same. Same. And it's like, I don't know what changes he's like, what transformation. Yeah. So I, Pluto, Pluto conjuncted my Neptune, I, Neptune in Scorpio. So that was in the 80s. Uh, early 80s and that was my uh, drug phase that was my experimental drug phase <laughs> I was you said uh, the word <laughs> oh, yeah there you go and, and I looked to see look what happened on the yeah. 20th of April yeah um it's so crazy that you're saying it mm -hmm. on the 20th of April two days prior we received a text from his girlfriend to say that he's been experimenting yeah yeah and we were horrified as parents okay never do any of that sort right right and um we we had to rein him in and i'm thinking to myself but this is a, this is a, a long transit 
Yeah, but it doesn't require, I mean, you know, you'd have to see an addictive personality in the chart to be worried, mm -hmm. you know, more. But the, the um, there will be, without a doubt, there will be curiosity about different uh, realms for sure, because, and that whether that's through drugs or any other experience, that was also a, a time when I felt very strongly about wanting to get into, uh, you know, understanding different things, like getting away from what I yeah. knew. Understanding secrets as well. I got into politics. That was another thing that um, I started to get into politics as well uh, at that age. Um, just trying to get to the root of things. Uh, Pluto Neptune can be deeply spiritual energy. You know, it's. Um, and, he, and he's not spiritual. He's a Sagittarius. He was born on 12th of December. And he's, he's not spiritual. I mean, we're both Sagittarians. He's not spiritual and he's, he's quite logical. Right his ways quite quite aquarian as well mm -hmm. uh, but like it, it just happened as soon as pluto moved into his zero degree yeah it's so yeah it's a, it's a powerful the funny thing about these zero degrees and 29 degrees these critical points in the signs which i find always respond very strongly in tropical astrology i don't find that they respond as strongly or as obviously in sidereal you know and mm -hmm. i because i'm always keeping an eye on both Mm -hmm. what is activated when and and what shows up in the zeitgeist and so on and i find that the tropical astrology really does show things up in a very tan tangible way and particularly when there's an ingress that yeah. really shows things up in a very tangible way and things like the eclipse on the 20th for example at 29 aries that's for sure going to be showing up something and so yeah, so I, I think that could be the, the beginning of something that just transforms over time. Um, it's a shift that is just a, a change in perspective. I definitely changed my worldview. I was quite conservative as a teenager. I was kind of, um, I was this bizarre kind of mix of deeply conservative and uh, incredibly rebellious. Like really, uh, I, d I could not be told. I could not be told. Mm -hmm. But I, at Sounds the same time, I was to me. pretty grounded. <laughs> I was like <laughs> home by midnight kind of thing. Um, mm. But yeah, I, and that was not, uh, that was, it was also almost simultaneously in the phase of, uh, because Pluto goes for two years, right, over these points, and then coming back mm -hmm. over that point took some time. So that was uh, also by the end of that time, I had decided one day to the next, I won't do drugs again. That's done, mm. finished, done. And then I went off to university. I was like, fine, I'll have beers or whatever, but not, I was not interested, just not, not it was done. It was like understood. Yeah. Kind of Been there, yeah. done that. Yeah, and it wasn't, um, with Pluto, things are very categorical. That's the other thing. It's just like moving on, done, just it, that's it. Have you found when they do the, the ingresses after a retrograde as powerful or more of like the very first ingress? The first, the first one. The yeah. first one. This is why, like, if we uh, do, I have a Pluto ingress chart. Let me just check. Um, when we have uh, the very first chart, it's like a natal chart. Mm -hmm. right? So mm. uh, the Pluto ingress chart is here, and so that's like a natal chart. I mean, look at this chart. This is terrible. Yeah. Like, could it any could it be any more about World War Three? Like, seriously, mm. could this be like yeah. Pluto on the Descendant and a full ninth oh, house by Aries. Mars? Like, come on, this is insane. <laughs> yeah, right? true. Um, yeah, so here we are. <laughs> uh, Shit. So all of that, of course, is going to be each time that these planets get triggered there's always a new story coming with regards to that. So I'm curious, for example, what's going to happen when Saturn comes back, of course, retrograde and then, and then direct again, Saturn is going to come back over that, um, that point. And so they, they just keep reanimating an aspect of that. And what is the eighth house there? That's, um, that's exchange, international exchanges in a global chart. That's, um, uh, oh, interesting trade deals and deals monetary you know uh, trade it's uh international dealings and also because it still remains Tax. in house as taxes as well but it still remains mm. in house so we always have to keep that reference uh fourth eighth and twelfth are always a little bit out of the not not really you know the fourth is under your feet the eighth is kind of discreet in terms of uh, in backroom deals or what you're what you're organizing in the 12th house COVID. 
kind of not really clear it's stuff that's uh, that is uh, foggy foggy yeah so very interesting ingress chart you take this, yeah. this chart in consideration to a personal chart and you say okay this is what happens in the sky when pluto ingressed and then so this would be a this would be a transit for an individual i wouldn't say like i wouldn't refer back I mean, you, you could, of course, if you're if you're an individual and you want to know what was going on on my on in my life on the 23rd of March. Right. But this is still a transit chart for an individual. But in terms of the effect of Pluto going into Aquarius, this is the natal chart, and so it's going to ha it's going to carry wow. the signature. With it. This is this is the signature of what Pluto brings with it. With it. Exactly. This time around in 2023. From now until the end of this Aquarius time with Pluto in Aquarius, this is the vibe that we're getting from Pluto. So it's kind of like the natal chart, wow. which is changing, of course, in every transit and in every progression and so on. The natal chart is evolving. This chart can also evolve, but it still remains as valid as a natal chart because this is, mm. okay, here we go. This is the imprint, if you like, uh, which makes it mm. you know, really impactful. I mean, Pluto and the descendant, for God's sake. Um, you know, it's when things hit the angles, uh, they're very significant. Mm. So, and the ruler of that being in the eighth house. So, mm. so, so much here to, to describe what we're experiencing here. So on that cheerful note, <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave all of this for next month and we'll meet again and have a look at what's going on in the meantime so yeah for sure come back and check uh, the comments the comments are always very interesting to say the least i always read the comments i find all the gold nuggets are in there yeah and compelled. there's some great people in our community which is really nice yeah. very very nice so, uh, all right. Good luck with the eclipse season, everybody. Yay! Thank you, Thank you so much, Susan. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Bye bye. Bye. Great. Thank you. See you. Have a great bye. week. Bye, everybody. Okay.